Hi, welcome to IR Magazine's new video series, Wednesday Winners, uh, where we interview winners of the IR Magazine Awards from around the world every Wednesday on the IR Magazine website. This week, we're joined by Rachel Guthrie, Head of ESG Reporting and Impact Management at TD Bank. Rachel, thanks so much for joining me today. Happy to be here. Absolutely. Um, so TD Bank has a long history of uh, being very successful at the IR Magazine Awards in Canada. And in 2019, TD Bank was recognized for its best ESG reporting. Um, so I'd love to talk to you a little bit about, you know, your approach to ESG reporting on behalf of TD Bank. And also specifically because I know that, you know, you don't necessarily come from a sort of traditional investor relations background, but investors are clearly considered to be a kind of core audience of your ESG reporting efforts mm -hmm. and how you think about it. So interested about, you know, your journey a little bit and, uh, and how you think about TD Bank's ESG reporting. Um, a year ago seems like a long time <laughs> yeah. right now, but uh, if I cast my mind back, it was um, it was quite an evening, and uh, certainly in, in my career, like a huge achievement. Uh, we were so delighted to be nominated for that award, and I think it really reflects just the journey that we've been on, um, at least in the 10 years that I've been reporting, just to see how prominence of ESG data and the importance and the relevance to the organization is certainly being picked up by investors and um, just the the collaboration between investor relations now and the ESG is so vital to getting our, our story out there to helping investors understand what we're doing what we're working on um, and the, the goals and targets ahead of us. Yeah, and you know, it really came through in the, when I cast my mind back to the, the original nomination that was submitted uh, by TD Bank about your ESG reporting efforts. You know, it really came through about the thought that you put into sort of uh, your ESG, sort of the ESG data that is out there about TD Bank and how that affects, you know, the indices that you're included in and so on. And I think that's, um, you know, a core part, a core, it should be a core consideration for sort of any IR team in terms of how they think about the ESG information. Um, so how do you think about, you know, engaging with those sort of data providers and so on? Are you sort of pretty actively involved in that process? Yeah, and uh, you know, it's, it's a challenging landscape. Um, everyone is searching for apples to apples comparison. And what we're realizing is that, you know, it's, it's very difficult to get that kind of data for investors, even within you know one industry such as the financial services industry. You know, every bank does it slightly differently. What's in scope, what's out of scope. But I think it's going to become increasingly important as we're seeing you know with the recent COVID events and other social matters, like just how important it is for us all to be measuring and managing these issues and reflecting how that that information to investors so that they continue to have confidence in management sure and so with, with that in mind you know what what frameworks do you use we get a lot of questions about whether people are using SASB or ECFD or GRI do you have a particular preference or sort of what what level of exposure do you have to the different frameworks yeah, we've used, um, like many companies, we've used um, the Global Reporting Initiative uh, for, you know, since 2007, so quite some time. And now we're seeing the, the uh, surgence of other indices such as the TCFD framework and the SASB framework, um, and now the principles of responsible banking framework. So all of these are influencing, you know, from different stakeholder groups, the information that is important to them um, and there's been a lot of chatter about is it either or, and I think it's more of a both and situation where just the quantity of information that people are looking for and, and the types of indices are, are now critical to our reporting path. So we've added a SASB index, um, we've added a standalone TCFD report. We're continuing to work on metrics to increase that transparency for our stakeholders. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, how has COVID-19 changed how you think about, well, ESG as TD Bank and then 
uh, how you're going to sort of tell that story in your reporting. Obviously, everyone has had to think a lot about their employees during the last few months in terms of employee safety, but also productivity and mm -hmm. stuff. Is that kind of the primary focus for you at the moment, or you know, are there other aspects as well that you're thinking about in terms of sort of reporting and storytelling during the next year? Yeah, it is going to be interesting to see how COVID like impacts the ESG narrative. Um, one thing that I've heard quite quite a lot is that it's really elevating the yes of ESG. You know, we're seeing a lot of conversation about social equality and diversity and inclusion um, in the landscape, the, the COVID landscape. So I have to confess, Ben, we were quite relieved to have our report released on March 6th which was like a week before the world turned a little bit upside down. Um, and we're now currently um, working on our 2020 materiality analysis. So I'm really grateful that we have the opportunity to do broad stakeholder engagement and ask those kinds of questions. Like, what do you see as the biggest risk? You know, how is COVID impacting the opportunities for the bank? So we'll be able to collect that data and help it inform next year's reporting process, which I think is really critical. So timing, timing in terms of trying to understand these trends um, has worked out for us this year. Yeah, and it, it's interesting timing as well, because I know, you know, SASB and other reporting frameworks, we're already trying to sort of build more robust uh, sort of reporting frameworks around human capital management, and that was already in progress to some extent and so i think it's um you know had this come a year earlier for instance i think there would have been uh, sort of it would have been an even more daunting prospect to think about uh, you know telling the s part of your esg story um but just yeah. finally but just finally rachel uh, just before wrapping up i'm curious uh, you know we've all been sort of sheltering in place in some capacity uh kind of cooped up for, for the last several months so uh, you know, how have you been staying sane? What have you been doing outside of work to make sure that you're uh, staying sane? Taking my dog for a lot of walks. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so, um, you know, access to green space um, and getting getting uh, um, able to, to interact with nature, I think, has become increasingly important. Um, my dog kind of looks at me and is like, what, again? We've already gone for two, two walks today. So um, that has certainly been keeping me sane in all of this. Yeah, I feel, I feel the same. Um, as I pointed out to you just before we started recording, as a portrait of my dog, uh, slightly embarrassingly. But um, yeah, I've been, uh, if anything, I've been sort of dragging him out for more walks than, uh, than he'd like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway... <laughs> Rachel, thanks so much. Thanks so much for joining uh, and participating in this call. I really appreciate the opportunity to chat and to hear about what you're working on at the moment. And we look forward to seeing your next uh, your next sustainability report uh, in you know early next year. Thank you.